All right, so the first thing we're going to do is add soap to the machine. And one of the key things is our quality of our water. So ideally, we prefer that you're using reverse osmosis water because it has the purest, uh, fairly pure content without the huge price tag of DI water. Um, at a bare minimum, we like soft water, so a water softener. If you're using typical city water, many, many parts of the country have very hard water, which means you have a lot of calcium and magnesium, which is not going to affect the performance of the cavitation bubble, but it will affect how sudsy your soap is, how effective your soap is. So if I have hard water, I'm going to need to use more soap than if I had soft water. So that would be a, a key is, again, soft water is a bare minimum, uh, ideally um, a reverse osmosis water. So what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add soap. And as you can see, I'm putting on protective gloves and protective eyewear. Uh, bought, my body is 7 to 7.5 pH. This soap here as a concentrate is going to be in the high 12s. So we want to uh, basically protect uh, the eyes, the mouth, and the, the hands. So we now know that we have a 5224 tank that requires a gallon and a half of soap. The soap Omega Smoke is the product we're going to use for soot and fire removal. These are one gallon containers. So to start, I'm going to say that the fire that we're dealing with is roughly a medium fire in terms of the soot level. It's not light. Uh, some parts of it are very heavy when we look at some of the other samples. So I'm going to start with a gallon and a half of soap as my approximate starting point. So I'm going to pour the first gallon in. Once we've added our chemistry, we're going to go ahead and turn on our filtration. And we're doing that so that we can mix the water. So we're going to let the, the, the equipment mix the water for us. So we want to have the filtration in the spray bar mode, so I'll get my best mixing. We'll let the soap mix in. I'd wait about a minute. You'll want, the, uh, you'll want a spray bottle, handy, an empty spray bottle. So I'll go ahead and uh, mix in and fill my spray bottle. So I'm adding that, that mixture. So right now we're at a gallon and a half. I'm going to turn my pump off. And we're going to test some items from the fire to see if we emulsify. So the way this works, let me get this thing sprayed, the spray going. I'm taking some items out of the fire. And what I'm looking for is, if you can see on this plate, I get, I'm starting to get that, that soot's emulsifying very nicely. So if I rub my finger on it, that soot's breaking down. Now, you want to test this on multiple items from the fire because there are some things that are easier to clean than others. So a plate, a basic dish plate like this, is going to be fairly easy to clean because it's a very hard glaze surface. So soot's not going to stick as, as, as deeply. So a piece like this. Um, is, not, is a hand-painted figurine. It's got a little bit of a rougher surface. So you want to make sure that the soot level is going gonna, is gonna to drop from there. And that one looks like we've got the right amount of uh, soap for these two products. I'm going to take this. This is also a ceramic, a ceramic coated glass or cup. And I'm going to go ahead and spray it. And the spray by itself is not enough soap to emulsify it. But if I take my finger and, and, and gently rub on it, you can see that the soot's breaking down. And you might just test the inside surface. So it looks like we've got a good amount of soap for this particular fire job. So now that we have, we've done that test, now it's time for us to actually measure the pH of the bath. So we take our pH meter, we turn it on, wait for it to read pH. I'm going to dip it into the tank. Now, these are waterproof, and they float. So if you want to just drop it, you can, or you can hold it. So I'm going to hold the meter in, 
And I'm going to let it sit for gen generally until the numbers stop changing. So you'll notice that the numbers will start to bounce up. And if you notice, once it starts to stabilize, you take a reading. So this particular bath is at 11.3. Now keep in mind, that's what this meter reads today. That doesn't mean this meter will read that in a week. Meters go out of calibration. We do, you can recalibrate them, but the key is to do the mechanical process first to test to make sure that we have enough soap, and then we take a pH reading. So if this is 11.3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that number down for this particular job, 11.3. So when I drop a half a point, so when, when I drop down to 10.8, is when I need to add a half as much soap in. So I'm going to need to add about a half, get another half a gallon of soap, mix it in, and take another pH reading, and you want to see that, that pH level bounce right back up to about 11.3 as we did before. Maybe 11.2, uh, but very close. Okay, if you don't quite get, if, let's say you can only get to 11, you're going to need to add more soap to get it to bounce up. Because if, right, if I don't have enough pH in the bath, I'm not going to clean properly. So just, a, we'll do a close up if you can gear in here. I'm going to go ahead and take this cup and I'm going to drop it in the ultrasonic tank for a one minute cycle. I'm just going to hold it by hand just so we can see the... Uh, so this cup is after one minute. Now I did not pre-soak it, so we, we did skip a step, but uh, you'll, what, you want, what I wanted to show is that uh, soot sometimes settles at thicker value cell. This cup here, if I look at it, I'd say, well, it's not clean. That wipes through, but if you look at this top surface, it would look to me as if it was burnt. So to, in my estimation, if I can't take a brush and I can't physically brush out or scrape off the burn mark, this would be some, a case where the flame was too close to the item and this would then have to be total lost. So whereas the surface is clean, and if I were to take this and rinse it off in the sink, the rest of that residue would come off. These, these are burn marks that are not coming off. Because if I can't take my thumb and scrape it off, which I can't right here, that tells me it's damaged. Okay, so this would now be a total loss item. Whereas this glass, or the, I'm sorry, this dish, if you take a look, the glass is clean. I would then take it to the rinse sink and rinse it off, and rinse off any residual residue. One question that comes up is, well, what if, what if the, thing I'm, the item I'm cleaning has a sticker on it? The sticker's coming off because I'm soaking it in hot, hot soapy water, so a lot of times these stickers are gonna come off. If it's a sticker for a plate that's just a general dinner plate, generally not an issue. If it was an, authentic, an authenticity sticker or something like that, then that product probably should be hand cleaned or chem sponge cleaned. All right, so we're going to, we basically have decided that we've got the right amount of soap. We did a few test parts and we tested our chemistry and our pH is 11.3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the loading station and show how we load different products into different styles of baskets and then we'll run the process.